God's grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you look at the bottom of these, at the bottom of these hymns, including the one we just sang, you can see the uh, scriptural reference which inspired the hymn. And uh, on eagle's wings, it was inspired by our text today, Psalm 91, 1 through 12, and one, Psalm 103, verse 5, which is, uh, bless the Lord, O my soul, he will lift you up on eagle's wings. He will restore your youth like an eagle's, because eagles have lots of vigor, lots of strength. Do you know how high an eagle can fly? Average height is 10,000 feet. Some to go to 15,000 feet. There are some geese who have been noted to, noticed to fly over the Himalayas that are 28,000 feet, geese. And there is a recorded detail about one species of eagle which is endangered, which has been seen to fly at 37,000 feet, which is the height of your airplane when you go to Seattle. Eagles, they can see a mile down. Hmm? And when at the same mile, what are they looking for? They're looking for food. They see a predator. So if your little poodle's out running around and you're in eagle country, you better watch out. Because you can't see the eagle, but the eagle can see your poodle. And if he goes after that for his lunch, they've been clocked at 200 miles an hour. 200 miles an hour. That's as fast as Sid drives. <laughs> That's pretty fast. He will restore your youth like an eagle. Psalm 103, verse 5. He will lift you up on eagle's wings. Who is this you? It's you. Because the first verse of Psalm 91, um, uh, Psalm 91 is, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. That's what you're doing right now. You're dwelling in the house of God. And it's not just this beautiful church, which, by the way, is a pretty substantial building. If there's a bad storm outside, you know, a tornado like they have in Nebraska, huh? And I had time, I'd probably haul over here because I think this would be a pretty place safe to stay, okay? But it represents God. It's God's house and God is here. You come here not just for the building, but you come here for the shelter of God who protects you. And you call him my refuge and my shelter. There are a lot of people in this world who don't do that. There are a lot of people in the world who find it a weakness to be in God's house, to claim God's shelter and fortress-like qualities and his protection. Thanks be to God that you are not so proud as to seek that, and that you need it and you want it. I certainly do, because life can be rough. I'm thinking right now of a lady whom I will call Gretchen. That's not her name. What you first notice about Gretchen, I was her pastor for 10 or 11 years. What you first notice about Gretchen is her thick European accent. It's a German accent. She was born and raised in Deutschland, where they talk like this. Huh? And they talk kind of, you know, muscularly and, you know, like that. And she would say, Guten Morgen, Pastor. And I'd say, and she, and she really smiled. She really smiled. And, and I learned, as uh, so I learned more about Gretchen, I learned why she had, a, she had a tough life. And went all the way back to her childhood. She was born in Germany. Hmm, and uh, her mother, I don't know where dad was, her mother and her sister and her were forced to, just like the sound of music, to walk out of Nazi Germany. And they didn't walk over the beautiful mountains of Austria. They went at night through the borders and stuff like that. Their lives were threatened. And that was the beginning of her life. And um, so she had this kind of gruff personality where she took life seriously. She took life seriously. And she got married and they had two daughters. And eventually four lovely grandchildren. And um, uh, he left. He left Gretchen to raise these daughters on her own. So she got remarried 
to Jerry. We'll call him Jerry. That's not his name. He got married to Jerry. And Jerry was kind of a happy-go-lucky guy. And you think that would be a nice compliment. She's serious about everything. He's happy-go-lucky. Sometimes it worked. Sometimes it didn't. They had to kind of work on their marriage. Had a tough marriage. And then what happened was the, the worst temptation to her faith is her older daughter got sick. I think she had lupus. And the lupus was chronic. And it took her from them. And we'll call her Pam. Her beloved Pam was sick for a long time and finally died. And being a single parent, she left her three adolescent sons to be cared for by grandma and grandpa. Nice looking boys. And, and one day, she was visiting with me. It didn't happen. And she remembered a time she took a trip. I think she went to see her, her um, sister, whom she got along with. You know, with a gruff personality, it's kind of like me, you know. You know, it's hard to warm up to somebody stern, okay? I mean, she's a good person, but she didn't have a lot of close friends except her sister. And she said she got on the plane, she got on the plane, and it took off, and she said, I felt so free. I felt so free because she was being elevated above her problems. God does that for people who go to the shelter of the Most High and abide in the shadow of the Almighty. You do that. This is good news. And it's particularly good news because your life's not so easy either. I don't know all the details. You don't know all the gory details about my stressors and problems and pressures and weaknesses and vulnerabilities and burdens. But they're there. They're there. Hmm. We're kind of an aging congregation. And I don't mean that in an offensive way, but all of us are approaching our last days. And like Woody Allen, it's not that I'm afraid of death. I just don't want to be there when it comes. Which is kind of funny, but it's true. That's a darkness. But God takes care of that because you dwell in the shelter of the most highly and in the shadow of the Almighty. A shadow, and I think of shadows, I think of a couple of things. I really, I'm picking on this one, Peter Pan. Peter Pan. Remember Peter Pan? What introduced him to Wendy and the other darling, I like that name, darling children, was he lost his shadow. And he came back to Wendy's house, the darling house, and looked for there. And Peter Pan woke him up looking for his shadow. Okay? It implies that the shadow, at least in the story of Peter Pan, has a life of its own. Has a life of its own. Maybe a shadow does have a life of its own. God has a shadow which has a life of its own, and it falls on you. It falls on you, and when you are in the shadow of the Almighty, you are taken care of. Kind of like a shade. When you go out into the desert to do your work, hmm, make sure everything's okay at the dunes or the land management is going well, and when you go out, it's already here, the heat. Oh, you look for shade. I see you at the grocery store parking lot. You're driving around and around looking for a shady spot to park to keep your car cool and to keep you cool. You have shade. You have the shadow of the Almighty. And he's your refuge and his fortress. Hmm? The psalmist speaks in metaphors. Re uh, the shadow, the shade, the fortress, the refuge, the eagle's wings, hmm? and what comes at you, he talks about that too, the snare of the fowler. There are predators out there. Hmm? They're setting traps for you. Remember Jesus, they set traps for him. They know you're a Christian, and they're watching what you say, and they're watching what you do, and they're trying to catch you in a, they're trying to catch you in a, in a trap, in a contradiction. Hmm? You call yourself a Christian and you did what? 
God's going to protect you from the snare of the trap of the fowler. Huh? And the plague and the pestilence. Right now there's this mosquito thing down in South America. Huh? That, that's a plague. That's a pestilence. God's going to protect you not only from physical ones, but he's going to protect you from spiritual ones. Plagues and pestilence that, that come at our doorsteps. Mm -hmm. That are right here in our country, in our neighborhood. The anti-church movement. I've said this before, we live in a post-church society. Church going is not a value anymore. That's why the pews are empty. It is not a cultural value. You don't care if it's a cultural value or not. You see it as a spiritual value. And bless you for swimming upstream. Swimming upstream and says, I don't care what the, what the world devalues or values. I care what God values, what's good for me. Hmm. And that plague, you are protected from. And what are the others? No, oh, there's some more. Uh, the arrows, the arrows. You have enemies. They might be in your own family, your own family, your best friends. Hmm? The people that say they'll help you, and yet they shoot arrows. Hmm? A thousand may fall at your side. Ten thousand may fall in your view, but no arrow shall strike you because... You have God as your shield. That's another one. Faithfulness is your shield. His faithfulness. This week, as I frequently do, I was at the office, and it was about, I have a confession to make, about 11. I eat lunch early. So about 11, 11.15, 11 I text my wife, and I said, headed home, which is a not so a subtle hint, to have lunch on the table. She didn't have to do that, but she knows I'm coming home t to eat, okay? And when I got home, when I got home, I walk, we're only six blocks away. When I got home, I say, did you get my text? She says, no. That happens sometimes with all of us. And I said, she asked, what was it? And I said, I'm headed home. I says, I don't need the text, you're right here. You know, that's the way God operates, his faithfulness, his faithfulness. Many times in the Bible, God said, promises something. I'll get you out of the wilderness. Hmm? I'll get you out of the wilderness to the promised land. I'll provide, I'll get you through the Red Sea. And the children of Israel go, how, what, sh how will I know? How will I know it happens? And God says, when it happens, you'll know. And then you go, well, that's going to take some trust. But God is faithful. He's always done it. He's never let you down. So let's say you have surgery tomorrow or this week, hmm? right? Let's say you have to go to the bank to see if you need to declare bankruptcy. Let's say you have a crisis on hand, okay, and you pray to God, you pray to God and say, hey, will you help me? And God says, of course I will help you. And you say, how will I know? And he'll say, when it's done and taken care of, you will know. And, you want, and you're going to go, that, that requires trust. And you can do that because he's done it in the past. Get it? Done it in the past. I've gone home many times, and she knows, don't you say yes, okay, that I will come home, whether you have, she has a text or not. So your shield is God's faithfulness. And this thing about the angels, the angels will protect you lest you dash your foot against it. I like the word lest. Less. That means for fear of. That means if you're approaching danger, you're approaching danger, God will, uh, I don't want to say dismiss, he w God will commission his angels who see potential danger to take care of you. To take care of you. Don't you like that? The work of the angels is to do what? To do the work of God. To do the work of God. Now, wonderful, and they delight in it. They can't wait to get an assignment to take care of you lest for fear of something bad will happen. I just want to put a little thing in here, and Jesus faced this too, is don't tempt God. God doesn't tempt you. You don't tempt God. So don't get that let your thinking be, well, if God is going to um, send out 
uh, his angels to take care of me lest something bad happens. I'm going to set something up. I'm going to set something up and see, you know, play with God. So don't do that. Don't do that. Jesus said, Jesus said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. So there's a little bit of warning in there. Temptations will come. You don't have to provide any. But when they do come, this wonderful, and he will lift you up like Gretchen. I'm free. And the biggest one of all is the cross. The cross cements. What's the strongest adhesive you know? There's stuff out there. Gooey stuff. What's the strongest? Anybody got any product? What's the strongest? Huh? What is it? Gorilla glue. Jesus on the cross, that thank you for helping me, is the gorilla glue of your being taken care of by God because he gave up his only son to snatch you from hell. To snatch you. You know, the tempter's going to work all the way, all the way to the grave to try to get you to turn your backs. But you go, uh 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 uh. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will f fall under the shadow of the Almighty. You have this. Nothing but good news this morning. I can't solve your problems, and I know you have them. I can't take care of your stresses. Hmm? I can't take care of your mortality, but I can assure you, I can assure you because of the Gorilla Glue, a.k.a. Good Friday, assures you that you have all this support. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.